Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. You know, I tell you guys all the time, when you have old equipment, you have to be willing to uh, spend a little time making things work. Uh, this is a 1973 580B case. It's a one owner. Actually, it's a two owner. I bought it from my cousin about eight or nine years ago that bought it brand new in 1973. Um, and it's very well maintained, even though it looks kind of rough. It's always set outside, but it's always been a been covered to a certain extent. Been having a little bit of trouble with the solenoid, you know, engaging with the starter. It's set for a couple of years. I did a little startup video here a little while back, and then uh, we found out the other day when we went to cut a couple of trees, the uh, shuttle shift wouldn't engage. It kind of gummed up a little bit, so we got that working, but I still had a tough time with the solenoid engaging the starter. So today, we're down here, going to pop the solenoid off. There's an external solenoid that mounts right on top of the starter, and I'm going to try to get that replacement solenoid uh, very shortly so that we get ready to cut a couple more oak trees for the neighbor we'll be ready to rock and roll to take a look down in here the part that i'm looking to pull out is this fellow right here this is the actual solenoid that mounts on top of the starter as you can see i sprayed wd-40 on it to try to loosen all the uh, the rust and everything on the nuts i was able to get the positive post of the battery disconnected which i had loose just a few weeks ago whenever i got this started for the first time in two years cleaned the rust and everything off of it so right now i'm in the process of taking that off we have to pull this off here. I don't know how easily that's going to come off. I think there's two cap screws, Phillips head cap screws, but it's gonna be a little bit difficult getting in there. Well, unfortunately, it's not really uh, cooperating. The solenoid is the type that has the rocker arm that's responsible for engaging the starter, and I cannot get the solenoid to separate with it intact, so I'm having to pull the entire starter off, and it's not cooperating at all. Now that I'm back here in the shop and got along the workbench, it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, it looks as though these two cap screws right here will come out. And here's a, a retention ring, for lack of a better term, that looks like it inserts down in between the cast housing and then the actual starter, uh, the starter armature housing. So I'm going to pull these two cap screws out and see if how that dislodges in there. It may just come right out, I don't know. I cracked these loose when I was down at the tractor, so they're loose right now. Here's our little retention. There you go, right there. Hopefully it'll slide backwards. There we go. See this little offset right here? That actually goes right into a slot between that cast housing and this uh, frame of the actual starter motor. That's what actually holds it in place. These two cap screws will line it up and then that actually holds it into place. When by the auto parts, they specialize in a lot of old tractor parts and pieces. I gave them the information off of the starter and took a picture of it and everything. And they gave me this box right here, which appeared to be pretty close to identical. I think that's it. And look, brand new spring. Got some basic instructions. Cool. I don't like it being galvanized. I'm probably going to, I might go ahead and put a coat of paint on this. The way a solenoid works. It's nothing more than electromagnet. So this is going to be a field inside here. And this pocket, this hollow pocket right here, whenever this is energized, is going to create that electromagnetism that's going to move this slug, this solid slug of material right here. It's going to move it that direction up to the bottom of the electromagnet. So when it pulls back here, watch what happens to the Bendix. It pulls back, pulls it out, engages the flywheel, turn loose the ignition, and a spring returns. That's what this guy's going to do, is push the solid core out of the solenoid back to the return position. So, energized, de-energized. Though it's not necessary, this is header, high temperature header paint.
I just kind of thought it'd be easier to uh, slip this back together up here vertically. So I went ahead and just slipped the new spring on the plunger or on the, uh, the core. With this tab, there's absolutely no way you can install it wrong. Now I went ahead and cleaned that iron core before I tried putting this together. But just depress that spring and roll that around. A retention clip holds it right into place. That's pretty cool. Now it's a matter of bending this copper band down, bolting it onto here, and then uh, reinstalling it on the tractor. Kind of nice. So here it is, guys. Already put back together. I put a coat of paint on it just to uh, so it wouldn't be galvanized. Maybe it'll keep it from rusting a little bit. I got all the um, all the new nuts and washers and everything attached on it, and. It's ready to go install on tractor. It's going to be a couple, three weeks before I can get down there to put that on. But anyway, for you guys, it's got the old uh, 480 and 580 series cases. Not the 430 and the 530, but the 480 and the 580 and probably several others that has this style of starter right here. Um, here's the part number right here. It's an SS200 solenoid, uh, and it just says standard on the front of it. It's uh, obviously, it's a rebuilt SMP, whoever SMP is, um, Standard Motor Products from Long Island, New York. That's where this is uh, rebuilt or remanufactured at. So, um, you know, the proof will be in the telling. You know, I'll hook it up and uh, we'll plug, you know, put the wires to it and we'll see, uh, see how good she goes. But I'm pretty confident it's going to be just fine. So, you know what? This was a Kind of an odd one because I had not taken one of these apart before, so it took me a little bit of thinking to figure out how it'd come apart. But it's just quick and simple. Um, the big key was seeing the notch down there and realizing that I had to rotate. And consequently, it will rotate clockwise or counterclockwise as long as that tab clears that slot, and then it'll pull backwards just like that, providing the the uh, stuff's not rusted up inside. You know, the, uh, the internal components aren't rusted up. Okay, you know what? We're going to put this on the tractor in a couple of weeks. And this is Tractor Man 44, and I'm out of here, guys.